Coming up on today's show, Tesla makes its one millionth electric vehicle, a Tesla Model Y. Deliveries for the Model Y begin a few days earlier than originally planned, and Ford takes the Mustang Mark E winter testing to prove it's got what it takes to survive in cold climates. These stories and more coming next. Congratulations, you've survived the week. All of the crazy stuff that I can't even talk about or even make an allusion to because yes, we had eligibility for earning money removed on a video talking about a video having its ads removed. And if you're wondering what the new normal is, well, I can't tell you that. But what I can tell you is that I've got some great pieces of news for you this week on the show. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship today. Find out how you can accelerate the electrification of transportation by going to electricauto.org. We start today's show with the fantastic news that Tesla has just produced its one millionth electric vehicle, a Tesla Model Y. Of course, Tesla began its vehicle production way back in 2008 with the Roadster, followed by Model S in 2012, Model X in 2015 and Model 3 in 2017. And with Model Y production well underway, it's not going to be all that long until we see Tesla produce its two millionth EV. Making this kind of volume of production is something that very few automakers have managed to do to date, especially within such a short period of time since their founding. So well done to Elon Musk and each and every one of Tesla's past and current employees. Based on the popular X3, the BMW iX3 electric compact SUV is due to enter into production this year as a 2021 model year car. And while BMW was originally due to launch it as a US market model alongside launches in Asia and Europe, it's now been confirmed that the iX3 won't be coming to North America at all. The reason? It seems BMW isn't sure people will feel the car's range is adequate enough, and with the US government pushing back environmental protections and other governments tightening them, BMW has decided to focus on markets where there's significant pressure on it to make more electric cars. The US loses out, and the rest of the world should benefit from higher volumes of iX3s to buy. Mercedes-Benz has officially updated its Vito commercial vehicle and up to nine seat passenger vehicle for 2020. And that means its all electric eVito variant gets an update too. And while it's meant for fleet rather than private markets, it's well worth a look. It's pretty similar on the outside to its predecessor, but there's now a more powerful charging setup with 11 kilowatts of onboard charging capability, as well as CCS quick charging at power levels of up to 110 kilowatts for the first time. Range from the 90 kilowatt hour battery pack and 150 kilowatt front wheel drivetrain is said to be around 421 kilometers on the WLTP test cycle. Expect pricing to be released soon. With any luck, by the time you start watching this, Tesla will have already begun deliveries of its Model Y. While Tesla had originally planned to start deliveries on March 15th, the day after Pi Day, it appears that Tesla decided to push ahead with things a little early. And initial deliveries have been confirmed in Oregon, Washington State and California. So if you're one of the lucky few to have got your Model Y already, congratulations. If you're elsewhere in the world, I'm afraid you will have a little wait for now. But if Tesla's Model Y rumored production rate is true, then I suspect the wait won't be all that long at all. Fellow Oregonian firm Akimoto has officially delivered a special version of its FUV, that's fun utility vehicle, to the Eugene Springfield Fire Department as part of a pilot project into electric first responder vehicles. Unlike the standard version of the FUV, the special edition called the Rapid Responder is kitted out with its own mini light bar and siren, full complement of emergency lights and radio equipment. It can accommodate two people and has a 100 miles of city range, as well as a top speed of 75 miles per hour. While that might seem a little on the small side, remember this vehicle can travel places that four-wheeled ambulances and fire trucks might not. And this means response times might be better. 
BMW held its official Q4 19 earnings call this week. During the call, BMW executives detailed the company's plans to axe around one half of all of its internal combustion engines. This says BMW was driven by falling profits, which in turn are partly caused by spending more money investing in electric vehicle development, as well as a desire to follow through on its promise to electrify its fleet. In a week where it also cancelled its US launch market plans for the iX3, this may seem like a mixed message, but like so many other automakers, it's worth celebrating when fewer internal combustion engines are made and more electrics are being produced instead. Volkswagen announced this week that it's getting ever closer to its planned summer 2020 launch of the ID3, and it now has 30,000 cars that it will be delivering, quote, almost at once. It seems perhaps that Volkswagen is now so confident it'll get those software updates done in time that it's willing to talk about rollouts. It says that the cost of the ID3, according to its own in-house calculations, will be less expensive for customers than a comparable internal combustion engine model. Using Germany as an example, it says after incentives, the entry-level ID3 will cost less than its current Volkswagen Golf Life, yet offer better performance and lower overall ownership costs. It's something that many electric car owners already know, but it's nice to see Volkswagen use economic costs as part of its marketing campaign for the ID3. It's not due to hit the market until later this year, but Ford has been teasing us this week with footage of its Mustang Mark E undergoing winter testing and having lots of fun in the process. Winter testing is, of course, standard for any new vehicle coming to market. But interestingly, while Ford is planning on offering the Mustang Mark E with rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive variants, three-quarters of all reservation holders right now are opting for the all-wheel drive variant. While Ford got some serious criticism at the reveal event for making an all-electric SUV with a Mustang nameplate, it seems that the car is certainly growing on customers. Fiat's all-electric Centoventi concept car, which included a modular battery pack design that allowed owners to add more range to their car on a temporary or ad hoc basis by simply slotting in additional battery packs, might actually be coming to market. That's at least according to Auto Express. It talked to Fiat's brand boss, Olivia Francois, and based on the Fiat Panda, they've been told the idea behind the Cento Venti is apparently, quote, not just a flash in the pan. But in order to become a production vehicle, Fiat would have to develop a set of battery swapping service stations to facilitate the rental of batteries for longer distance trips. And to be honest, that's no small feat. And now, it's time for short shorts. Bollinger has unveiled what it's calling the E chassis. Essentially a Bollinger B1 or B2 without the cab or body on, these chassis will be sold to commercial fleet specialists who wish to build their own all-electric variants of bespoke Class 3 trucks. With reservations in all 50 states for the Mustang Mark E, Ford is now detailing a little about reservation holders for the same. Aside from detail where the car is popular, the West and Southwest are top when it comes to demand, we learn that the Mark E is bringing a higher number of new customers to Ford than Ford's brand average. The London Electric Vehicle Company has officially announced the name of its range-extended commercial delivery vehicle. Based off its already popular plug-in taxicab, the new vehicle is called the VN5. It has the same specs as the taxicab and will enter into volume production this year. Honda has officially ceased making the all-electric version of the Clarity full-size sedan. Only available in select markets, the sedan was never meant to be a serious contender in the plug-in marketplace. But the plug-in hybrid and hydrogen variants will continue to be made. The state of Utah has fined reality stars, the Diesel Brothers, more than $8,500 for modifying diesel trucks to circumvent emission systems and ultimately pollute Utah's air. It's expected the fines will raise to more than $1.2 million. Washington state has passed its zero emission vehicle mandate, or rather lifted a previous van on zero emission vehicle mandates. This means that the Washington Department of Ecology can now actually begin to legally draft its own ZEV mandate, forcing automakers to sell zero emission vehicles in the state.
Researchers at the University of California, Riverside, have just published a paper which opens the door to faster, healthier charging for electric vehicles, using an adaptive algorithm which measures internal cell resistance and then adapts charging speeds. This new method could keep batteries cooler when rapid charging and minimize premature aging. Cadillac has delayed the unveiling of its Lyric EV for the same reason that so many other events are being cancelled around the world right now, and the reason that we haven't been able to earn money from two of our videos this week. If you're confused, just look in the comments. Plant machinery specialist Case has introduced a fully all-electric backhoe loader into its family of vehicles. It can do everything its diesel counterpart can, just with less noise, pollution and maintenance. Because all the buckets and everything are all hydraulic, there's very little difference from a usability standpoint. Model 3 owners in China are taking Tesla to court over the fact that they received their Model 3s with previous generation autopilot hardware installed. Tesla has said it will retrofit with the newer version when it has hardware available. But we're now hearing owners outside of China complaining of the same problem. France has enacted a new law designed to prevent people from modifying their electric bicycles. Modify your electric bicycle with a motor greater than 250 kilowatts or increase its top speed and you face fines of, wait for it, up to 30,000 euro, as well as potential jail time. The city and county of Honolulu, Hawaii, has filed papers against big oil companies for their part in climate change. The lawsuit states that oil companies knew the damage they were doing to the planet, yet continued anyway. This is certainly one to watch. Renault Trucks has begun series production of its D and D-wide ZE electric trucks at a dedicated construction facility in Normandy, France. The medium-duty electric trucks will be offered to customers fully assembled or in body-on-cab configurations, which is standard for the industry. Samsung says it's developed a brand new prototype solid-state battery pack that uses a silver carbon anode and has the potential to deliver upwards of 800 kilometers of range when used in an electric vehicle. Sadly, it's still some way from series production. The UK government has announced that it will be continuing its plug-in vehicle grant program in an attempt to get more British citizens to make the switch to electric. Sadly, the total amount to each customer will go down in terms of purchase grants, and now it will be capped to £3,000 per vehicle. A brand new electric car filling station, the first in the UK, will launch this summer, with the capability to rapid charge 24 vehicles at once. The electric forecourt, part of a new grid service network of sites, will be located in Braintree, Essex. Workhorse, the company that had intended to bring the range extended W15 pickup to market, has ended all development of the same and passed the torch onto Lordstown Motors, the film born out of Workhorse. Customer reservations have been transferred across from one company to the other. Tesla is on the lookout for a new Gigafactory, this time one where it can make its upcoming Cybertruck. And where better than the home of pickup trucks Texas, which is under consideration. That said, so too is Tennessee, so watch this space. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Amidst all of the cancellations happening worldwide, our buddies over at Fully Charged Live have, out of an abundance of caution, decided to postpone Fully Charged Live UK 2020 until October this year. While I'm sure many of you are sad that you're not going to get to see Robert and the team, as well as us, in May, as originally planned, I can tell you right now that we have absolutely no plans to miss the rescheduled event, which will now take place over Halloween weekend. And since my birthday is November 1st, it will also be my birthday weekend. I'll be bringing more info just as soon as we have it. And... Finally, with more and more countries around the world mandating that electric vehicles make some form of noise when traveling at low speed, we've seen some pretty inventive solutions popping up on social media to tackle the problem. But none have been quite as crazy 
or as interesting and innovative as the active sound control kit being offered by British firm Miltech Sport for Tesla Model 3 customers. Designed to plug and play with the Model 3, the kit allows you to make your Model 3 sound like, well, pretty much any sports car the system has sound samples for, from a Lamborghini to a Ferrari. Not everyone wants an exhaust rumbler, but for those who do, well now, you can put it on your car. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's News Roundup show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us all making the switch to clean green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, become a local educator yourself, attend local monthly meetups, or just talk to EV owners about making the switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon, and you can send us a coffee with Kofi. I would love to tell you to check out our swag store, but we had some of our very own artwork removed by Teespring. Wait for it, because we used the words Chevrolet and Bolt in the description, something that is apparently copyrighted. And so now Teespring's not letting us sell that t-shirt. So we're on the lookout for a better merch provider. So bear with us until we fix that one. I'll be back soon with another show, but until then, thanks for joining me. Stay healthy, wash your hands, and as always, keep evolving.